This metallic ball is probably one of the most single dangerous things that you could have in your lab. And whilst seemingly not looking threatening from first sight, this thing is known as the Demon Core. Yeah, not so innocent looking now, is it? Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and this ball, the Demon Core, is known commonly as the third atomic bomb. Let me explain. Yes, it's called this because that is exactly what it was intended for. When the United States and the Allies developed the weapons through the Manhattan Project, the nuclear bombs, a potential third nuclear bomb was being armed in preparation for use on Japan during the Second World War, after the first and second bombs dropped. Of course, we all know what happened in our timeline, that after the first two bombs were dropped, the Japanese Empire surrendered, bringing an end to the Second World War. But two days later, the US had a third bomb lined up, just in case the Japanese were still swinging. Thankfully, this third nuclear bomb never needed to be used, but the US had this nuclear material sat in their lab and not really having anything to do with it, and the war being over, I mean, do you just, do you just stare at it? No, you probe it for the means of science and technology. That's right, get a bunch of scientists together and let them prod and poke it for a while and see what happens. So yes, the Demon Core was used for testing shortly after the end of the war. And as you might expect, conducting tests on something called the Demon Core was probably not a good idea. However, to be fair to them, this ball of plutonium was only ever dubbed the Demon Core after some time went by, and particularly after some very dangerous events occurred. So up until this point in time, this ball hadn't yet acquired the name, the Demon Core. But I think we can all agree that that name is pretty metal. What I think is particularly funny about this whole thing is that the actual original name it was given was Rufus. You know, the name that you give an old lovable companion, your old doggo pal that you want to pat him on the head, and he's just your best buddy. Well, um, it's funny how things change because those two names don't sound like they have anything in common. And that's because the dog we're talking about isn't a Labrador, but it's a Rottweiler. Okay, so someone on the internet is about to try and explain to you what nuclear physics is. From someone that had no idea what nuclear physics was. <clears throat> so this is important for context, but bear with me here. So, a critical mass is the smallest amount of fissile material needed for a sustained nuclear chain reaction. In this case, a mass of fissile material would be critical when it has the ability to sustain fission chain reaction, aka when the nucleus of an atom is split, a process which releases huge amounts of energy. And basically, this chain reaction is self-sustaining, meaning that it happens again and again and again. When a nuclear bomb is prepped, the nuclear material is made close to critical mass, so that when it's dropped, it is primed to go off naturally. So, as you might imagine, it's pretty dang dangerous to um, push one of these things to the point of critical mass, particularly when you're just studying it for science. So, like I said before, having a bunch of scientists poke and prod it was always going to be a fantastic idea. The Demon Core itself had a low safety margin to ensure a successful explosion if it was dropped. A safety margin of just 5%, mind you. This meant that it was already pretty critical without any further messing around with it. So yeah, um, I know what you're asking. Why on earth did we play around with this thing? I mean, we'd already seen what the first two bombs had just done, so why even bother? Well, even though they are dangerous, the reality of nuclear energy is that it is something which we could harness in the future, and people do today. You have to understand that at this time, we were still very, very new to the whole world of nuclear energy, and what potential could be there for us in the future. Yes, whilst people always want to go on and create the next biggest and best thing, even if it's a nuclear bomb, the proof is in the pudding that nuclear fission could be a potential source of energy in the future. Hence why research started to go into the Demon Core, to try and unlock its potential and to get a better understanding of how this thing worked. One such test was undertaken by a physicist called Harry Dogvin, in which he was testing how external factors could cause the core to change state and be more reactive. You know, despite the fact that Rufus at the time had a safety margin of just 5%, so 
this was always going to end well. But of course, this was all needed in the name of science. The core itself was placed within a stack of neutron reflective tungsten carbide bricks. And with the addition of each brick, this moved the assembly closer to critical state. Basically, he was picking up these bricks and moving them towards the core to show how reactive it became. And look, I can't believe he did this, but our man Harry, he picked up a tungsten brick and uh, like the buttery fingered man he was, dropped it on the core. Yep, he had just dropped a brick on a piece of nuclear material that could probably kill them all. And uh, yeah, that's what you get when you drop a bloody brick of tungsten on something called the Demon Core. As you might imagine, Rufus was a little bit pissed by all this and went super critical. A self-sustaining chain reaction resulted in radiation being expelled from the core. Whilst Harry quickly removed the bricks, he would die 25 days later from acute radiation poisoning. This is absolutely bonkers and just goes to show that you've got to be so careful when dealing with something like this. Even if you're an incredibly experienced scientist, if you get complacent, particularly around safety, then things like this can happen. Thankfully, no one else was seriously hurt by this and he was the only one in the room at the time, therefore being the one who ultimately suffered the fate of radiation poisoning. Okay, so after this first incident, yes, I'm saying first because clearly they didn't learn their lesson the first time, the second time was probably even more stupid. That might be a little bit unfair on Harry because at the very least when he dropped the brick on it, it was an accident. But this second time was not an accident, it's you just being goddamn stupid. Louis Slotten conducted a further test in which the core was housed in two beryllium hemispheres, which would act as reflectors. They would be testing the activity of the core compared to when the reflectors were removed, in which the hemispheres always needed a slight separation between the halves in order to ensure the core was never completely enclosed and the reflectors ushered together as if this happened, the core would instantly go critical mass. You'd think that if there was any risk that the core could go instantly critical mass and potentially kill everyone in the room, that there would be a safety mechanism in place to prevent those two hemispheres coming together. Well, there was. And uh, oh boy, I'ma tell you what it was. It was something so sophisticated, you'd never guess. Our man, decided that it would be a swell idea to keep the hemispheres separated by the head of a screwdriver. Yep, he just shoved a screwdriver in there and used it as leverage to stop the hemispheres coming shut. Somehow he thought this was a great idea. I mean, sure, he was in this room waggling his screwdriver around, showing everybody how cool he was and making sure that there's zero safety precautions in place for himself or anyone else in the room. Let's see how this goes. One day he's doing just that. He's showing his fellow scientists him wiggling a screwdriver. So what happens if something were to happen to that screwdriver? Maybe it slipped and uh, an unfortunate accident would occur. Well, that is exactly what happened. The screwdriver slips and this causes the reflectors to shut and the core goes instantly supercritical. There was a flash of blue light and heat coming from the core, to which he quickly flicked off the top of the reflector, bringing it down to a level that was stable. Whilst this only occurred for a few seconds before he managed to get it back to a stable state, this was all that was needed for everybody in that room to be exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. Whilst most people thankfully didn't have long-term effects as a result of this, the one man who did suffer the ultimate fate was Lewis, the man who was conducting the experiment. That was probably down to the fact that A, he was the one next to it and in close proximity when it went super critical, but also his body probably acted as a shield in order to stop a lot of the deadly radiation going to other people in the room. As a result of both these incidents, it was decided that maybe, just maybe, people should not be handling something quite so dangerous in such a nonchalant manner. They decided that all future experiments of this nature would be performed remotely, using cameras and remotely controlled machines, with all personnel being kept within a quarter mile radius of being near this thing. So yeah, this was probably what they should have done before the first two incidents occurred, making sure that in the future these sorts of experiments are carried out with a degree of safety. Now, 
After all this, yes, the Demon Core had truly managed to live up to its name, having had two victims already. Shortly after this, the Demon Core was actually melted down. However, the myth and the legend still sticks around today. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Rufus sounds a little bit more deadly than you first expected. I mean, you can't even take him for a walk anymore without getting acute radiation poisoning. Just sad, really. But hey, here we are. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.